What's going on guys, this is Matt and using older heavily discounted Xeons for desktop PC builds isn't that new of an idea. Last year the 8 core Xeon E5 2670 CPUs were going for only $70 buy it now on eBay. Now fast forward a year later they're back up to well over $120 a piece. But the 2670's little brother, the E5 2660, is still providing you with 8 cores and 16 threads at up to 3 GHz for under $60. I actually picked up this 2660 here for only $47 buy it now with free shipping, which when you hear a little more about its specs and performance, you'll realize how insane of a deal these CPUs are. So seeing the recent introduction of 8 core CPUs into the mainstream with Ryzen 7, it had me thinking it would be interesting to see how this E5 2660 stacks up to the newly released Ryzen 7 1700, a CPU that costs more than five times its price. Now these are first generation E5 Xeons, meaning they run on LGA 2011 motherboards, which can get a bit pricey as they aren't being made anymore, but buying an older OEM workstation like this Lenovo and upgrading it to fit your needs seems to be a really good option if you're wanting to go the Xeon route. I picked this full X79 Lenovo workstation off eBay for only $150. I popped in the 2660 and was fully up and running ready to test the CPU out. Now there are some positives and negatives that go along with going the Xeon route, but we'll get into those in a minute. So let's go over the basics of this CPU. The Xeon E5 2660 is an 8 core 16 thread CPU with a base clock of 2.2 GHz and a turbo clock of 3 GHz. All this with 20 MB of L3 cache means that when the CPU came out 5 years ago in 2012, it was quite the powerhouse and had a price tag to match with an MSRP of over $1300. But even though the CPU is 5 years old, it's still plenty powerful and the fact the CPU is the exact same architecture of Apple's current Mac Pros, which is pretty crazy to think about because an 8 core Mac Pro goes for around $5000. So when you take into account Intel's minimal IPC gains from generation to generation, you can start to see how good of a deal the E5 2660 is at only $60. One other benefit of going the Xeon route is you get to use ECC memory which is ridiculously cheap on the used market. You can easily find 32 gigabytes of ECC DDR3 RAM for $60 which isn't much more than the current price of a single 8GB stick of DDR4 that you'd need to use with any of the modern AMD or Intel platforms. So what are the negatives? Well unlike buying a new Ryzen CPU, these CPUs are used and have no warranty meaning if they break replacing it's going to come directly out of pocket. The second biggest downside I see is the lack of single threaded performance. With an older architecture and a modest 3 GHz boost speed, the CPU is going to have a tough time keeping up with modern CPUs and single threaded applications, but if all you're doing is basic computing tasks and gaming, then the CPU really isn't for you. But if you're doing anything like streaming, encoding, virtualization, or any other heavily threaded application, and you're on a tight budget, then I would take a long hard look at the E5-2660s. And this is really the same with Ryzen 7. If all you're doing is gaming, then an i7-7700K will suit you better, but anything heavily multi-threaded, the Ryzen 7 1700 is the current price to performance king, offering similar performance to Intel's $1000-6900K at around a third of the price, which really makes me wonder how this $60 Xeon will stack up to the 1700. In terms of testing, I figured I would rely on all synthetic CPU benchmarks, as gaming isn't really the intended use case for either of these, and it would be an obvious victory for the 1700. But if for some reason you guys would like to see a gaming comparison between these CPUs, let me know in the comments section down below, and if enough of you want it, I'll do my best to deliver. In terms of test systems, these both were tested with 8GB of RAM, 1333MHz for the E5 2660, and 3000MHz with the 1700. Both had an SSD for the boot drive, and both used the same GPU. Also, the 1700 was not overclocked, I just kept it at stock speeds. I figured I would start testing with a community favorite, which is Cinebench. Cinebench, for those of you that don't know, is a synthetic CPU benchmark that gives a pretty good idea of raw CPU performance. Basically, it uses the CPU to render an image as fast as possible and assigns a score based on its performance. Starting out with the Ryzen 7 1700 and Cinebench R15, it received a very respectable score of 1390 for multi-threaded and 153 for its single threaded score. The E5 2660 received a multi-threaded score of 941 and a single threaded score of 88. This means there was a 47% increase in performance 
from the 2660 to the 1700 in the multi-threaded test, and an increase of almost 74% in the single-threaded test. But keep in mind there's an over 450% increase in price from the E5 2660 to the R7 1700. So the fact the 1700 isn't even twice as fast as a CPU that costs one-fifth the price is pretty crazy. Also, some of you may be wondering why the single-threaded performance is at a much larger performance disparity than the multi-threaded, and that has to do with how the turbo clock works. When the 1700 is using all cores, it only goes up to 3.2 GHz, but when it's only using a single core, it can go up to 3.7 GHz, unless overclocked, of course. For the 2660, its turbo speed with all cores working is around 2.7 GHz and 3 GHz when doing single-threaded processes. So as you can see, there's a larger difference between the single-threaded boost and the multi-threaded boost. This, combined with Ryzen's better IPC, means for single-threaded processes, Ryzen pulls ahead even further. Moving on to the second benchmark, Handbrake, which is a video encoder, I had each machine upscale a 3-minute 1080p video into 4K using H.265, which is incredibly intensive on the CPU and can take advantage of all them cores. In this test, we saw an increase in score of over 50% when comparing the encoding time of the E5 2660 to the R7 1700. This again shows the Ryzen 7 1700 is about 50% faster than the E5 2660, but still shows that for its price, the 2660 is keeping up incredibly well. The final benchmark I decided to run was Geekbench 4, which measures the performance of CPUs at performing everyday tasks using tests to simulate real-world applications. The performance difference between these two CPUs in this test was actually a lot closer than the other two tests. The Ryzen 7 1700 still came out on top, but only by about 13% on the multi-threaded test and about 40% increase in single-threaded performance. So as you can see, the Ryzen 7 1700 consistently beats out the E5 2660 by a fair margin. With what I've seen, it's safe to assume the 1700 is at least 50% faster than the 2660 overall, which would be bad if they cost the same price, but the fact you're paying between 4 and 5 times more for the R7 1700 shows how incredible of a value the E5 2660 is presenting. And if you have the money for it and can take advantage of all those cores, then I still highly recommend it. But if you don't have the money to spend over $300 on a CPU alone, but still have the need for a high core count system, well, in that case, I would highly recommend looking into buying an older X79 workstation, upgrading it with the 2660, a bunch of cheap ECC DDR3, and a decent GPU for graphics acceleration, and you could have a pretty powerful system for not that much more than a Ryzen 7 1700 alone. So yeah guys, I think we're getting to the end of the video. I'll have links to both the R7 1700 and the E5 2660 in the description if you guys are interested in checking those out or purchasing them. If you guys enjoyed the video, go ahead and leave a thumbs up and consider subscribing as I have a lot of great content coming out in the future. Oh, and as always, this is Matt from Tech by Matt, signing out.